historic downtown Arlington, where we're starting this episode of Arlington Eats. I'm Andrew Tanillion with My Arlington TV, and we've got you covered for breakfast, lunch, dinner, dessert, places to have a drink, and even some places to find specialty food. It's a packed day. Let's go. Our first stop is the Sanford House, a bed and breakfast more than two decades old with a breakfast that's timeless. We're making the 506 Breakfast Tower. It's one of our top sellers here at Restaurant 506. That's executive chef John Klein making Restaurant 506's very quick, very easy signature dish. It's basically a smorgasbord of pancakes, sausage, bacon, and eggs and cheese and will definitely fuel you for the entire day. You can share it, but if you're a big guy, it'll definitely fill you up. You can make this meal actually for five, 10 people if you want, depending on how big the pancakes and what you want to stuff inside of it. Which is part of what helped them become one of the top 100 brunch spots you'll find online. To accomplish that vision is really rewarding and I couldn't imagine doing anything else right now. What general manager Valerie Landry is also talking about is following through on her grandparents' vision of opening a thriving bed and breakfast. In fact, the couple lived right here in what is now the bar when they lived on property. Now it's up to their granddaughter and a talented staff Finishing touch. to continue building what is already a favored destination. We are going to top this real maple syrup powder sugar. It's a masterpiece, I think. If you're looking for somewhere that's not quite breakfast, not quite lunch, this is it. Fork in the road, where the chef takes ordinary food down a different path. On this burger, this guy's got Swiss avocado, caramelized onions, and a fried egg. That's a regular burger. What you want... So here we go. ...is this. The awful waffle. And you'll love it when it's on the menu. So be sure to call ahead to make sure they've got all of this burger's bacon jam, blue cheese awesomeness. Yeah, it's kind of crazy. Owner and chef Josh Hopkins crafted this entire menu, including its standout favorite, Crackeroni. This is about three orders, and I just, it just starts flying, it's crazy. Here's why. You're looking at three kinds of cheese. Just kind of melts in there, and I'm going to leave it alone for a couple minutes. Monterey, mild cheddar, and sharp cheddar all together in elbow pasta. And you can see that skin right when you pop it over. And then we'll just cut that up and cut it right into the, right into the sauce. Add in truffle oil, maybe the optional bacon, Wait for those flavors to get to know each other, and this will be the only dish you ever order. And that's the crack. Kind of an eclectic menu, simple and good. And what could be thought of as the simplest way to summarize Hopkins's lifelong passion for a career? Both he and his wife love to share with you. Yeah, best team ever. Yeah. <laughs> uh. Another great duo can be found here at Jamaica Gates, where a mother and son team are bringing the best of the Caribbean to the American Dream City. We're offering something new to a place that hasn't tried it before or hasn't explored Jamaica as much. Tino Tapper is talking about this oxtail in curry goat, among many other authentic Jamaican dishes served here. We can't keep in stock. The oxtail is, is one of the ones that are in high demand. That's because this kind of cuisine, like this jerk shrimp, used to only be available on the east side of the Metroplex. A problem Tapper's mother, Barbara Renfro, remedied by opening up this restaurant in Arlington, making it accessible to many, many more. See people come and try something new and like it, it really makes me feel good as well as the rest of the family to know that we're offering something new to a place that hasn't tried it before or hasn't explored Jamaica as much. When you're doing something that you like to do and see other people enjoying it, it really gives you a good pleasure like you have accomplished what, what you want to do. 
<laughs> a legacy she's passing on. It's a good feeling to know that you've started something that can go on to your next generation. And if you're in a hurry, Oh My Barbecue is quick. In fact, it's one of the smallest restaurants in town, but also one of the busiest. Smoking some food here. That's owner Harvey Washington doing what he does at least five hours every day, smoking meat. I love cooking. I love cooking. Ever since he was a kid. My grandfather raised me. My grandfather, my grandmother. He did a lot of cooking for us, barbecuing. Kind of rubbed off on me. What you're looking at right now is Washington preparing his special Oh My Seasoning. This is what they come back for every time. Once they taste my sauce, that's it. It goes on the brisket that'll keep customers coming back. Word's getting out. Food moves through this kitchen just as fast as the cars that used to move through this now converted gas station. And of course, this place is kind of small. But no matter. I got it. Because besides ribs, you're looking at his biggest seller, the stuffed baked potato. I would say that my potatoes and my ribs would be my really money maker. I tell you what, you have a lot of barbecue restaurants here in the city of Arlington. This small building here, number one. And I take pride in that. After that, what's faster than quick? Chicago's tasting more, if you can catch them, because like us, they're on wheels. How are you doing, sir? Hi, can I have uh, two kids uh, hot, plain hot dogs? Sure can. Hot and deal. Owner Terry Kingsbury is more than happy to make those for you. I breathe my truck. I love it. We have a good time. We have fun on this truck. That's Terry's friend Lisa and Terry's daughter Tamika. I'm the oldest. So what I'm making now is a cheesy beef. She picked Chicago style food because her late husband was from there. And we're both on a mission to bring the best of the Windy City to the American Dream City. I love Arlington. Love Arlington. Just as much as making these. The loaded bomber fries. Made up of special seasoning, bacon, ranch, and chives. Pleasing people. I, I am really about pleasing people. I love when people Hi. come back and tell us it was so good, they would be back. Her Euros definitely do that. They're a lamb beef combination with tzatziki sauce, diced tomatoes, and onions all in a pita. I've dreamed about having a food truck for many, many years. I love having a food truck. And if you're looking for something heavenly, stop by Sugar Bee Sweets, where cakes and cookies are the owner's culinary canvas. It is definitely a lot of fun. Especially after you learn that this whole store started as an idea in Heidi Allison's kitchen. I kind of started just recreationally for friends, just making cakes out of my home. And once social media kind of started building up, I was putting pictures out there just for myself. And it kind of just kept growing and growing. And the more pictures we put online, the more people were asking us to do. So many that she now has an entire staff of talented artisans fulfilling all the orders. Yeah, I think that looks good. And takes time, precision, and patience. Even the most skilled surgeon would celebrate. I enjoy it. It's so much fun. It's relaxing to me, actually. I'm drawing a basement. Through these custom confections that fit all seasons and celebrations, Allison has crafted success. I kind of almost want to like go back and add just a little bit more gold in like streaks. Okay. You know, word of mouth has been the biggest thing that's grown the business, that's grown it the fastest. So it's, you know, really humbling and flattering to know that that's how it's grown. There's a similar story at the State Fair. A father and son team from Arlington and now famous for their Texas size sweet snack. We're competing against very talented vendors and concessionaires out there. Justin Martinez would know. His father, Rudy, opened this restaurant here back in 1978. Justin grew up in the family business and now helps run it. Every day I, I can't believe that I'm, I'm a part of this. Especially this, coming up with crowd favorites like the Cotton Candy Taco. Winner of the State Fair's 2018 Big Tex Choice Award for Most Creative and it takes months and months and months to come up with the final product. But barely minutes to make the one you'll enjoy. So we're gonna try to incorporate all that sugar goodness that you see here. First you start with the cotton candy, then place that in a waffle cone shaped like a taco, add on cookie crumbles and chocolate sticks, and you now have what they hope is something 
that'll satisfy your sweet tooth. When you bite into this thing, you got your cotton candy experience, but then you also have a s'mores experience as well. This comes from a long lineage of winners. Fried bubblegum one in 2011, fried Thanksgiving dinner in 2013, and funnel cake ale the next year in 2014. In fact, the first beverage ever to win for most creative. Growing up in this environment, I just thought it was fun. I never really thought that it would be something that becomes my career, becomes part of my, a deep part of my life. And if you're thinking, there's no way to outdo this, come on, this is Texas. <laughs> well, that, meant that big one's made of foam. It hangs outside the family's outdoor pavilion, one of the four locations they have here at the fair, so you'll know you're at the right place. And we thought we would make a splash by having the largest cotton candy taco in the world. For a dessert just as eye-catching, come here to Chamasto, Brazil. But be warned, don't try this at home. Everyone get happy here whenever they are here to celebrate. That's manager David Generoso, who will oversee your all-you-can-eat dining experience that'll start with 16 cuts of slow-cooked meat. But it's when you get to dessert that you'll truly get to see this steakhouse's spectacle. Cheesecake on fire. Serve table side to countless smiles. It all starts by coating a glass with liqueur 43. It's a sweet Spanish vanilla based liqueur that has 43 herbs, including cinnamon, peppermint, lavender, and chamomile, which happen to be good for digestion. The last thing on your mind as you witness this. Everything working to give a Brazilian experience to Arlington people, American people. You can also discover culture at Bunton Plaza, home to an Asian market specializing in selling food you can only find here. This is the central location of older culture. Owner David Dang built this sprawling 175,000 square foot market on 14 acres in 2016 to be a gathering place. We got a lot of customers far away. They come from as far as like Albaline, Waco, to this area, because there's no Asian market or central location like this in that area. So in the weekend, you see a lot of new face coming out of town. Here you can find everything from dragon fruit to Asian pears. This is Asian melon, more sweet than sour. The number one reason people shop here is for the live seafood section strategically sealed off from the rest of the store. Blue crab and tilapia are some of what you can get fresh. And across from the market, you'll find something sweet, sugarcane juice. Double strain, yes sir. Always freshly squeezed from real sugarcane by Brandon Maukosi at his family's restaurant. Dream come true, you know, uh, we're, we're starting off small right now. It's a popular place. Inside what's an already popular plaza. You can say, yes, I have many businesses before, but this is the biggest one. And this one I consider truly fulfill my American dream. And when you're looking for a fun place to drink, Four Kahuna's Tiki Lounge is a popular Polynesian escape. The neat thing about Tiki is all you need to be an expert as is knowing how to relax. You can definitely do that here. We're told Tiki became popular in America after World War II, as soldiers returned home having seen some of this culture overseas. It was something that we, I felt like we were kind of missing here in the Dallas-Fort Worth area. With a drink menu that reads like the back of your favorite novel. For example, this, the Jet Pilot. That's as much show as it is something to be savored. They've really thought this through. This is gonna be a new experience no matter who you are. Bartender Brad Bowden is our tour guide through taste. Comes to us highly recommended from this tiki culture. He's been, he's got a lot of experience in the bar industry. Out of the 28 drinks on the menu, one of his specialties is this, the headhunter, where he carves a banana into a dolphin. Mix together dark rum, banana liqueur, and the other third of, what was this banana? All into a blender. Spin it. 
and you have an exotic adult smoothie. And there are even some people that, that are Tiki Files that come in and experience in new stuff and that's kind of what it's, it's about, is you're on adventure. Especially when your drink is served in a skull. This is the zombie, a mixture of dark rum, light rum, pineapple, grapefruit, bitters, absinthe, passion fruit, falernum, and grenadine. In short, the Polynesian prescription from any problem. My favorite thing is when people walk through the door on a hot day and they just go, ah, because it's cool and they're about to have a tiki drink and they feel like they're off the world for just a second. Another place you can do that is right next door, here at Legal Draft, home to the most creative craft beer around. The response has been great. You know, everybody likes the, the cleverness of it, but at a certain level too, they, they recognize that that cleverness has got a purpose other than just being clever. Owner Greg McCarthy is talking about these, the cans, all legal themed, that put his brewery on the map and his beer on countless shelves in Texas. And if you do the branding work, the story tells itself. While what you're looking at is his second career, it's actually based on his first 30 years as a lawyer. And with choices like Legally Blonde Lager, Hung Jury Hefeweizen, and the Presumed Innocent IPA, it's all entertaining and of course imbibed, which makes it very much enjoyed. It feels incredible. He's got a Bavarian brewmaster who oversees all of it, including the canning of, at a minimum, thousands of cans. It's really gratifying just to be here to see the looks on people's faces. McCarthy believes in Arlington's growth so much that this brewery hosts many events throughout the year, like this crawfish boil and a monthly farmer's market people from all over are favoring. Really, I wanted some place where people could be a community here in Arlington. This is Tim. That's what you'll find here at the downtown Arlington Foodies Farmer's Market. This is Fabulous Ranch. Everything from homemade favorites That's really good. to what you'll consider gorgeous once it grows from the ground. We needed something here that would boost not only excitement and health and wellness, but support some of the community in what they do as well. I know, I'm very happy it's getting busier. <laughs> Hello! Hi. I've got some chocolate keto cupcakes here, some cake balls. This is Michelle Bickford. They are three each. Owner of Emotions Made Edible. Paint your own cookies. These are strawberry cupcakes as well. The market is open monthly on every second Saturday. Thank you. Appreciate it. By having a location where they can come out and sell their wares here in Arlington, it really helps them create that community environment that we're wanting. And it also helps them just generate a little bit of income and gets their name out as well. Ah, thank you. And those are just a few of the stories and some of the incredible places spread all across the American Dream City. We'll see you next time.